This is Sean with Gate City. We are on a job today in High Point. And so what we have going on here is we have the basement is flooding. So there's a full basement right under here. And they just had this, this driveway put in and they just paid somebody to put a drainage pipe in. And the drainage pipe, they put a perforated pipe along here, which I don't recommend doing. They already have small downspouts and if you look up here the gutters are in really terrible shape so let's see if i can get you up there the other thing that's going on here is we don't have another downspout here so we're going to be adding a downspout and starting out for a new downspout so they pretty much filled in with all this organic matter in here. And here's the pipe. I'm not really sure what this thing is supposed to be doing. So you all tell me, what is it supposed to be doing? I don't know. But either way, whoever put that, that in there did not, it did not help anything. So they still have water flowing across. They have like a utility room in there. The other thing is the whoever did the concrete or whoever did the finish grading used this mulch, this like organic mulch. So there's absolutely no value there at all. And that stuff is all along the edges here. It's not the right stuff. You need to use subsoil in there and pack it down really well. So the other thing the drainage person did was created this moat to hold water right here. And so this is it's lower than the than the slab and it's just nothing but gravel and you all know from watching my channel that when you pour water on something like this the water goes right through it and so we're going to be tearing all this gravel out of here and properly grading this with subsoil so i've got a load of dirt on the dump truck there so we're going to be packing that in really well we got to get all this crap out of here all this this is all just a complete waste I mean, this, this stuff, is there's no value to this whatever. So I've got Ronald with me and we're gonna be doing this. Oh, we're also going to, let's see. We're also gonna take this downspout. So look at this long run here. We're gonna be taking this downspout, which is dumping. And again, this work was just done like a few weeks ago. So. That obviously is not doing what it's supposed to. And once you're dumping water out here, this is still, this, this concrete is graded wrong. And so we're gonna take this all the way out to the drainage ditch. So like I always say, if you're gonna pipe some gutter water, make sure you don't just trade a problem there for a problem here. Make sure you take the water all the way till it's gone and not a problem anymore. So look at, look at this, it's sloping right into the house. So anyway, that's what we're working on today. We need to get our PVC pipe in here and unlike this black corrugated pipe, the PVC can't bend around everything. So we think the best route is gonna be if we lift up this vent well thing and maybe go between the gas meter and the wall there and for a straight a straight shot. So if that thing will pop out of there, we'll just lift it up and put our pipe underneath it. But that's what the plan is, so Ronald's gonna work on that. You're moving too fast today, but I got it. You think that pipe was doing anything? I doubt it. Golly, I don't know how people think that's going to work, supposed to work. Yeah, people that we know ain't going to need no rain to stay steady putting it in and praising it. Yep. <laughs> We're going to show you all what we do with this good pipe right here. All right. 
we're gonna be as gentle as we can. Take it out. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And this this is a perforated pipe, so it has holes in it. And they're sending that gutter water into a perforated pipe along the foundation. It's like the lot the worst thing you could ever do. Yes. Ha. So we're gonna get this right. Up to two weeks before they get the truck back in the shop. Look at what they did. Oh, man. So this is just like a, like a well. Yeah, they're just creating the, the yep. habitat. Yep. Water flow right into. And it. all that, all that gravel, the water just goes right through it, and it creates all the, the water is just going to fall right in here, and then it's going to go right in the in the basement. Worst clay. Yeah. Don't wait. appear to be any does there. No, they just put all that black stuff in there. You see the dirt in the front, boss. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like sandy. Yeah. Water's just filtering right on through. Yeah. So I told him if this clay. if this doesn't fix it, we may have to dig up those beds and put some clay in. So this is phase one. Well, but this is so glaringly wrong right this, here. I think this is going to do the fix. And not only that, but the gutters were dumping right in here. Right. So we're going to get the gutters yeah, onto the concrete. Can't help but flow right down there and right into that little hole. Yep. And then water flows downhill. It's going to go right down. So yeah. That's right. I'm already worn out just digging out all this damn gravel. <laughs> It's very important that you get this organic matter dug out of here. And I'm, I mean, we're pretty much deep enough at this point, but you could scrape some of this grass off too if you really wanted to. But you want that new subsoil, that clay, to, to, to meet up with existing subsoil. And the two layers will fuse together and form a waterproof barrier. Now, if you have this in there, this is low enough, it might not be a big deal. But either way, I wanna get this, this black crap out of here. This is just like organic goo. There's nothing to it. Look, it just doesn't doesn't do anything. Anyway, the nice thing here is they did such a crappy job of the finish grading. I'm just gonna lose all this along that edge.
we're getting all this filled in and I want to get our pipe in here before we start burying ourselves with dirt but Ronald said this this rock right here this little point needs to be bumped so let's see if I can bump it think I can bump it A bit loose, yeah. It's loose right there, too. Strong. Yeah, but that's already already on the damn it, it's already on the ground. <laughs> Killing two birds here. There we go. How about that? Yeah. Need some extra weight. A little more, more dirt up and pulling toward the slab. Okay. Yep. Get our pipe in there and. No, we want that point to terminate here. Yeah, right there. Yep. That's you know, amazing what primer will do to things. But, fuck you, Buck. Let me get some dirt for you. Put this camera out of the way. This one? Yeah. Or no. It's on now. Just move it somewhere where it's. Where it's Okay, I just tracked over this. So let's take a look at what's going on now. So what do you all think? Any rain that lands here or flows here or whatever here flows this way it's getting kicked off the foundation instead of being held in that deep moat that the previous guy created. So I don't know about you all, but this, this makes me pretty proud. I'm very proud about this. And the main thing too, is we're gonna be solving the, the basement flooding problem here. And so this just makes sense to me. What do you all think? We got our pipe pretty well buried here. And we got a full bubble of fall we're just screaming through here and so now we're just going to rake this mulch back and so we do have a pretty decent overhang here so there shouldn't be a lot of water landing in here especially once we get the new gutters on and so the homeowner said okay what do we do what if, what if your proposal doesn't fix it and i said then we would need to get get this into clay sloping correctly but i think we're going to solve it that problem around the corner 
was so glaringly obvious that I think that was our issue. You like it? How many times you get asked in the videos, do y'all not ever take a break? Oh, <laughs> they definitely say you work hard. I mean, all of us, we, did any of you not ever hear that question? Oh yeah, they're always talking about how, how hard we work. Well, we ain't doing it Especially when I speed it up. Especially when I speed it up. Yeah. How you like that? Yeah, it looks good. Let's do it. It's, it's kind of flat, but I think we'll be okay. Well, we got a good ditch here, so we, yeah. If we mine this wire right here, we good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Spray you it. Run to Jeremy or Corey and wants to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think we good, boss. Be alright. All right. I'm just over here covering up if you need anything. Okay. You want me to, you want me to have to finish that up first before we go any further? Nah, I'm almost done. Didn't mean to leave you there by yourself. Sorry. When you're running across a, a long flat area like this, you basically don't have much fall there. And so you have to create your fall with the trench. And so you see me looking back and trying to follow Ronald's yellow line here. And I'm trying to follow that to, to stay straight, but I'm also trying to gradually increase the depth of my trench here. And so I don't want to increase it too much because I'll run out of fall. I'll pretty much use up all my fall too quickly. And so it's really important to to, to, to mind your fall as you're going across a flat area like this. Now when you're going across just ground that's sloping down, you can set your trencher to whatever depth and just go and the, the grade itself, the lay of the land falls. And so by maintaining the same depth, you're going to fall. But here we have to create our fall. Okay, I just got that trench done and I need to do a little bit of hand digging right here just because they marked cable and I don't know if this cable is in use or not, but you definitely don't want to take out the, or the, the homeowner's cable if you can help it. So that's what I'm working on. Ronald's up there cleaning up that little mulch area and we'll be rolling here in about two seconds. Below the slab that you're sitting on. Okay, well, I'll. So it's about we, right there. Let's say we come up to here. Okay. So maybe just a four inch. <clears throat> maybe just a four inch nipple or five inch nipple. And a couple of. Um, I'm going to throw a full joint back in this. And uh, use this piece down toward the end. I guess it really okay. matters. This might make it right there. Will you lift that that back end up and lift it up, 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 up? All right, down. There it is. Will it go towards me, any? We got a we got a hot spot right there. That's okay. That's okay. That's it. Yep. 
Okay. Down, down. Come on forward. Good. Good? Good. All right, this end that's getting glued up is called the business end. This end that's just floating by itself is called the dumb end, so Ronald likes me on the dumb end. No, oh, I like the dumb end. Uh, let's see what this looks like. Uh, yep. Come on, good. That looks pretty good from a naked eye. Beautiful. Uh, we're level, but toward that side. We could probably lift it up just a hair. Or maybe I could take this down. But how's that look? Better. Okay. We're dead level. Okay, let's do it. I should have brought your blue level over here. Yeah. Actually, let's, let me clean a little bit of this out. Pull it out of there. Where's that level? It's in the barrel. <laughs> yep. Yep. Good. pressure don't be pushing on that pipe All right, we got our outfall on there and Ronald's checking our bed here, making sure everything is bedded and not moving around. You basically just stand on the pipe and walk around on it, make sure it's not flexing all over the place. So, because when we put that dirt on there, you can't tell if it flexed or not, so you don't want that. We spend all uh, so much time trying to get it falling correctly. You don't want to mess up your fall. Okay, let me get the backfill blade put on the trencher and we'll be going here. I just finished backfilling and you all know from watching my channel that I like to leave my trench mounded and the reason is every bit of dirt that comes out of a trench like that even though you put that huge pipe in there it'll all take it back and so if you just rake this flat and call it a day that trench will reform really quickly after it rains so we leave it mounded like this and then as the trench settles it will flatten itself back out and many of you have asked why I don't run the track over it and pack it in and flatten it out. And that's because I want to mine that pipe in there. I want this thing to, to settle in slowly and naturally and fill itself in and bed itself. So 
we sacrifice a little bit of looks for maybe a month or so while this thing settles and we gain much better function especially on a really flat area like this where we really had to mind our fall and so ronald's working on getting some seed together there he is i guess i'm gonna go try to spread that extra organic matter i pulled out from it on the edge of the thing on the driveway there so that's where we're at what's a good looking outfall there boss thank you nice i wanted to mention the outfall too and so every single homeowner i talk to doesn't know where the things come out and so to me this is deliberate this is easy to, to monitor it's easy to keep track of it's easy to know it's working it's just you know where it is even if this thing grows up with grass it doesn't matter because it's still going to flow and so what i do here we bury this flat paver at the surface of the pipe and so there's unimpeded flow for any debris to come out of here and so what we'll see when i come back here is we'll see shingle dust and debris and whatever else may be getting into the gutters it just gets delivered out here and so i like these outfalls to be super deliberate and super just just like they're supposed to be here you can you can keep up with them as opposed to just burying a pipe somewhere and forgetting about it this is this is not a system you want to forget about on your house Found a place to use all that extra organic matter. I just as easily, or maybe even more easily, could have dumped it in the truck and hauled it away. But they could have used a little bit here along this edge. So there it is. Okay, we are finished with this job. So I just talked to the homeowners and they are super happy. So we caught that gutter now. I did want to mention we could have sent that gutter along the building, the front and over to the edge, to the side there, but that that is still that water is still an issue, so it would be going into the neighbor's backyard and everything else. So we decided to take the extra effort to run it all the way out to the ditch here, where that water is no longer going to be a problem. We stubbed out over here for our future downspout, and Greg. And Travis will be over here at some point. So our downspout stub out's up in there somewhere. And then we got our solid pipe across here. And I told him you can do mulch or pine bark nuggets or needles or whatever, as long as you don't put a solid border along here. So put bricks or something that the water can still get through. Either way, it's gonna be it's packed down, so it's gonna work. So yeah, they're really, really excited and I guess Ronald's getting, this is a dead end street here, so he's getting backed up over there. And I'm getting ready to meet him. We are back out here this morning and the gutter guys are here. So we're gonna be getting gutters on this thing. And I just got done talking to the homeowners and they said that there's been no more flooding going on since we did this work. So that's really, really exciting. Oh, and then we've got our little stub out right there that the gutter guys are gonna drop into. So we should be in really good shape. Okay, the gutter guys are making pretty good progress here. I wanted to show you really quickly. This is the gutter guard that they had. So this is like a combination of a plastic style with large holes and then a stainless steel mesh. And this stainless steel mesh works really, really well, but the problem is it, 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 clogs, up, it clogs up really quickly. And so this is a good style, the tray style. And we're going to show you what we're going to put in. So I, ha I haven't really seen this two styles used in conjunction before. The customer wanted to go with black. black according to the gutter guys, black is the new white. 
So back in the 2000s, everybody wanted white for gutters. Now everybody wants black. So we'll see what, what the difference looks like. There's, there's the before. So today our install is going to be a little different. Uh, instead of doing the uh, guard install on the ground with that pitch on that roof, which is somewhere probably around a four or a five pitch roof, uh, it's actually quicker for us to just complete the gutter job, climb up there, just use the roof to our advantage, and that way okay. you know, we can move a lot faster on the roof versus doing it on the ground. So typically they install the gutter guard as they're building the gutter on the ground and then hang it. But this roof is shallow enough that you can just get up there and get it done. Yep. So we'll be able to walk it up there. It'll it'll save us some time. So okay. We're gonna do it that way today. Okay, good deal. And hopefully it'll warm up. Yeah. When he said 7.30 this morning, I was like, oh man. <laughs> he, I don't think he calculated how long it was going to take us to get here. Yeah, well, plus the temperature was cold. Yeah, I met him at 7. Uh, and most of the time we could be, but we got hit by every single light between Rockingham County all the way through. Oh, wow. Started at 68 and 40 and hit everyone until we got here. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we're in the loop. Steve, hey, Dagum. Really, it makes everything difficult. I like Joe Murphy right here. So, we actually look good on the reveal on the bridge. You only got to kick at the top. Way to you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let you come out of here. I'll be that crashed into you. All right. <clears throat> Right here. Yep. yep. Can we put a little, well, a short piece of gutter doesn't really do much when they've got a mow, does it? It doesn't do a tremendous amount. Will it fit in that hub or will it? We can put it after that. It'll go, but that's three inch pipe though. Yep. Yeah. You could get her one of those flex. I seen one. No, that was yesterday. The sheet and runs way past the shingle. Huh. And then the shingle's just way too long. Yeah, well, see, the roofer probably put his standard overhang past the sheeting, but the way this thing is constructed, it just eat up, it ate up that gutter. Huh. Yeah. And look at this. That screen doesn't even let the asphalt shingle dust go through it. Through it. So that's going to clog it up. Look at, look right there. It's just all shingle dust. This is exactly why this mesh screen doesn't work. It works really well for keeping stuff out, but you do want this stuff to go through and get washed away. So look at that, that's getting clogged up now. It's almost like solidified in place.
All right, so what I did here is I just cut this with the snips, cut these shingles. I didn't do a super great job cutting, but you can't see the edge, and that opened that up quite a bit more to accept water. So I'm pretty happy with that. You, I try to stay about a quarter inch or so off the drip edge. You can kind of see it right there. But the drip edge, or whatever this is, is just hanging over too far. So whoever put this on, put it on too far, and then the shingles went on even further. So you're supposed to have a nice open spot like that. But anyway, it's a lot better than it was. So I'm happy with that. Better is you start with the longest piece, and that way if you make a mistake, you can put it in the shorter. Oh, okay. But on this one, I didn't because I had a, a light coil. Oh, okay. So, so you want to use it up? I want to use it up on small stuff. Yeah. Get on my heavy coil to pull the longest. Okay. Yeah. That's probably this might finish the saddle yeah. So we just started as far away from the truck as we could get and came back closer. Okay. I thought you might have started back here because it was complicated. Uh, yeah. Better way. He's gonna go ahead and build it. Yeah, we got it now. We got 20 feet out and the machine's uh, 10 foot. So okay. You just calculate that 10 foot so if you get out there and get close to him. You, you know, you got 10 foot. Put it we have gambled and lost. I said we have gambled with that at times and lost. You need to untwist? Yeah. Don't touch that. 22 six. As a drop. Ugh. I think that was. I hope that's a dog. I mean, the whole pistol lid pulls out. Yeah. Catch 
That's why this end was so low. Right. And it's nice to have that good pencil. Yep. Let's call it 104. She said, that, did you not silence that thing? I said, man, it took me forever. I was like, by the time I silenced it, they had left. Well, is it silenced on hers when you silence it? I think so. Maybe, I don't know. Can I get you reloading it? Yeah. So that's how the gutter comes, is a flat roll like that. Right. So you're going to have some of this that's just common. So we mark into good material and every 15 inches we'll use for pipe band for downspout. Okay, so you try not to waste it. Right. So this machine can use different colors and just yeah. leave the rolls here. Right. We run a uh, 16 in stock colors, I think, is where we're at right now. Okay. And this is black? That's black. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this machine is like the life of your operation. Absolutely. That's really cool. Uh -oh, you're all right. Oops. No, you're fine. <laughs> we're going to bump out and find the clean water. Okay. Right there's his clean mark. Okay, that's his clean mark. So yep. you just chop off that. Okay. Now we're good to start cleaning too. So that was the end piece, and that's the beginning piece of the new roll. And both of those will get dabbed and used as needed. crap off of there. Uh, let's, see if it'll let's see if it'll hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it also hammers. Yeah. <laughs> it sure does. Alright, the gutter guys punched the hole right there. <coughs> but we are over a little bit further. Damn it. I just noticed that. <laughs> What happened? We measured. We get so used to punching one foot eight, and it was a two foot eight. Oh. Huh? Math happened? Math happened, yeah. Math happens? Son Good of a. The thing is that gutters are not like milk, they don't have an expiration date. Yep. So we can reuse this Just somewhere find else? Find a home somewhere else. It's not this home. Dang it! I'm glad I'm glad I noticed it before we. Well, got we would have noticed it when we got to. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it.
Take two. Take two. It's gonna work better. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if we if we put this downspout in in one piece from top to bottom, it's gonna hold a gap behind it where it goes into the hub of the pipe. Right. So if we put a short piece in and close that gap, now the downspout will sit tight on the wall here. So that little bit of angle will be taken right. up right and there. That will clean up the hub going into the hub. Okay. Sometimes we have to get our hubs off like that because there's residual concrete up against the footer. Involves me way up in that bush right there. <laughs> See, I thought the bush was going to be nice to hide the downspout. <laughs> Worst case, we'll have to screw this elbow when we go up for the gutter door. But otherwise, I, mean, I can reach most of it from the ground, I bet you. That's what I say. Uh, yeah, I get it off from right here, buddy. I'll get in there. I'm in it now. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> this one don't is not sticky. It's the stickiest it is. <laughs> I don't know where it's going to help you. Oh yeah, I know what I know what's in your shirt now. Huh? I know what's in your shirt. That sticky yeah. thing. Yeah. Yep. Uh oh, that's the back. That's the back. Uh huh. Beautiful. Height has its fancy sometimes. Yeah. Oh my God. Now, if this is the summertime, you wouldn't catch me in here. Too many wasps and bugs. No, and I'm not worried about the. I'm worried about Satan's hot dog in here. Well, I will tell you that there aren't any venomous snakes in Guilford County that climb trees. I don't care. It ain't got to be venomous. All of them are venomous. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they aren't venomous. Oh, I'm scared to death of every single one of them. I run in a burning house all day long. But you put a snake on me, it's better than average chance you might have to call a hearse. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Travis is a firefighter. I'm scared to death of snakes. Nah, they're fine. I can't even watch them on TV. I find them all the time on my channel and talk about them. Ooh, nope.
good as new. All right, now, the brand new down spot that we added. Over on this side, we're going to kick this out a little bit away from this foundation. Just repositioning that spillway. Just gonna kick it out here. And if you remember, we sent this downspout all the way to the drainage ditch. And the reason is we didn't wanna add more water over here. It's never a good thing to just turn problem water from one area to problem water in another area. So we, the homeowner made the decision and expense to take it to the ditch where it's no longer a problem. I know, right? That won't work. That looks pretty solid now. Sweet. This is our last piece to go across there, the longest one. You guys measured once and cut twice, right? Right. Okay, good. Looks like 15 inches to me. <laughs> I think I can reach it from the patio there. Before I was hitting right there. Oh, okay, so it's holding me out. All right. 
So you think it's better if we do our pipes before you do your stuff? Either way. Maybe That's what I tell people too. And maybe we should start doing what you're doing there because ours often kick out a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, if I if I know that you're going to pipe, mm -hmm. then we'll just uh, try to stop it in you know, where the area that you got to work up to. So mm -hmm. maybe the way it works. Tight fit. That's one. That's one advantage of corrugated. I can bend the corrugated to get the down. The down right. You can't do that with the PVC. Yep. I'll have to add that to my next benefits of corrugated video. <laughs> I did a really funny one already where I talk about all the benefits. Right. Of course, they're not anything you would want, but right. they're technically benefits. That's exactly what you're looking for right there. Water comes in here, and this is a good gutter guard. It lets the shingle dust go through it and flow out of here, but keeps the debris out. Look at that. The guys are just finishing up the gutter guard, and I wanted to show you, we put a couple of A elbows where they had Bs. So there's an A elbow. And there's an A elbow, and they had a B elbow on it before. So it's very important to get the right elbow. That's going to kick the water where you want it. They had this one kicked out that way, but I like it better on this concrete flowing away from the foundation. So that we changed to an A from a B. And then this one's a B. Again, that's a B elbow.
Huh, and that's all it takes, huh? One inside deflector. One inside deflector. Awesome. And here I thought they came like that. No, <laughs> we wake them. We're just about finished here. They're getting cleaned up. They just used the magnet thingy to pick up all the nails. So we want to get all those cleaned up every time. So we're getting stuff blown out of there and Travis is getting the truck loaded back up with all the excess junk. Let me go get my hand. Trying to make sure we don't take out the customer's internet lines. Oh yeah. We're finished with this job, and there go the gutter guys. <clears throat> I'm back out here. It's been, I guess, several weeks since we did our work out here, and I just talked to the homeowner. It's been raining all night long. It's actually been pouring, and of course it just stopped. But I talked to them and said, what's going on over here? Oh, and look at that. Look at that dry line. See that? So anytime we do some grading like this, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that dry line and you can't fake that. So that tells us that the water is definitely staying off of that area. And anyway, I talked to the homeowner and asked him, how's it going? Has there been any flooding and whatnot? And she said, no, everything's good to go. So, if you remember, we added a downspout in here. And it's back in here somewhere. Right there. So that's giving the water an extra way to get out of here. And then we caught this downspout here. Right there. And of course it just stopped raining on us. But that one, we took it out to the cur to the ditch out there, just to get it out of the way. And I'll take a look at it on the way out. But yeah, this has been a really, really good fix. We got the, the gutters done. And then of course we corrected this whole mess that they had going on. And they were gonna put grass seed here, but they ended up with mulch. So take a look at that dry line. Yeah, you can't, you can't fake that dry line. That's what you're looking for. A lot of water out here, that's for sure.
Yeah, and this is still flowing a little bit. It, it just stopped raining. Of course, that's my luck. But yeah, that's working really, really well to kick that water off the house. And our grating, our gutters, our piping has all solved, have all solved their problems. This was definitely an interesting job and I felt really bad that the homeowners had gotten screwed over by the previous contractor who put in that drainage system. And for some reason, a lot of people just want to disappear water into gravel like that. And so I understand what they were thinking in terms of getting rid of the water, quote unquote. But the problem with what they did is they, they basically let the water go into the basement there. And so by removing that gravel, by building that area up with clay, now the water is going to be shedding away. And so keep in mind, any drainage solution, you should be able to identify the problem water, you should be able to get it in a pipe, and you should be able to see that water flowing away. Disappearing problem water into the ground is not a solution. And so we were happy to get out there and get that corrected for them. The, as far as the gutters go, that was just kind of a, an, an additional thing that we looked at it and we said, okay, we could definitely do gutters here. And I think I even gave them a price for the front doing only the front and then doing both of them, doing all of it. And so this was really, these, these homeowners were great to work with because they just wanted to do what was right for their property, get things done correctly and all that good stuff. So they were really easy to work with. And I do want to mention too, I've mentioned it before. If you, if you find a contractor that you enjoy working with, even if, even if they don't do something, if you're looking to do something else to the house, just call them and say, Hey, do you know anybody who does whatever heating and air or something? And the reason is because good contractors tend to work with other good contractors and good contractors tend to avoid the bad ones. And so if you have one that you're working with and you like them, that you trust them, whatever, just call them and ask them for a re recommendation because oftentimes they can steer you in the right direction. So this was definitely an interesting one, and I wanted to see what you all thought about the change in the white gutters to the black gutters and how that looked. That's really popular in our area is going with black gutters nowadays. And so Greg, I guess he does about half and half white and black, but a lot of people who are upgrading, like in this video, they'll go to black because they like them and they're more trendy. So let me know what you think about this video. All right, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. This is Sean. Thanks again for watching and you can support my channel and my work on YouTube. Links are in the description. You can also give me a super thanks. You can subscribe and like and comment on this video. And all of that lets YouTube know that my channel has good content and that it's worth watching. Thanks again and I will see you on the next one.